Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's show. We're with our good friend, Jeff Vandermortel. Hey Jeff, I'll tell you, it is that time of year and I love when it's time to come to Northern Wisconsin, but more than that, I love when I get a chance to fish with you because I always say it, you are one of the most knowledgeable guides that I have ever met in my life. Not to, you know, I'm wondering every time if I, if I'm hoping that you'll like start shrinking a little bit the older you get, but it seems like either I'm shrinking and you're growing. Hey, so you know what? Post spawn the walleyes. I always myself think about shallow water, but that's not really the case all the time in northern Wisconsin. It depends on the lake, right? <clears throat> okay. I mean, when they come back up to feed, a lot of times they'll come back shallow, but you can also find them stacked up out deep. Okay. Um, but when everything goes at once, a lot of those fish are, a lot of the fish in the system are doing the same thing rather than having it all spread out with fish at different stages of that. So okay. Then you'll find a lot of times when they drop deep and then they'll come back up shallow. But a lot of times the most aggressive fish are certainly shallow and in the warm water. Okay. But, uh, a lot of times you find them all deep too. That's a lot to think about, fishing. everybody. Yep. Hey, I'll tell you what, like I always do each and every week, hold on to your heinies. Let's go catch some fish. Buddy? This feels good, John. Yeah, Feels like a good fish. Yeah. Oh, that, look at that fish. That is a nice one. Oh, 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 oh. that's one thing I am always surprised about northern Wisconsin, the size of the walleye. You know? Take that. Oh, 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 buddy. That's nice a great job, way buddy. to start it off. Heck yeah, it is. <clears throat> Jeff, I'm always kind of wondering, like, when you look at all these different lakes you have in northern Wisconsin, and you look at how big these lakes are, how did you know to start here? I know obviously you're a fishing guide and you're out pretty much every day, <clears throat> but when you start picking apart a lake, how do you pick it apart? You know, let's let's kind of teach people that right a there. Lot that's a good a lot of that, yeah, that's a great walleye. Probably pushing 20 inches, maybe quite into 20 there. Nice beat, little slot Beat fish. up a little bit on yep, the post old spawn dorsal. female. Yep, post spawn female. Some got a hole over there, some, some teeth marks there, probably a musky. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So how nice do you fish. pick a spot? You know, so it really depends on the seasonality, right? You mm -hmm. go through the season, you've got your, you got, for any species, you basically got like your pre-spawn, your spawn, your post-spawn, pre-summer peak, summer peak, you know, your early fall, and then you yep. come into turnover, and then you got your post-turnover till ice up. You know, so all of those things for each species is going to be different, whether it's crappies, walleyes, muskies. Um, the biggest thing is kind of start where you, you know they are, or start where you think they should be, right? So right now, or post-spawn, you know, you start on those spawning shorelines or something adjacent, a weed bed adjacent uh, to a spawning shoreline is a great place to start finding those post-spawn females like that. Okay. I mean, we've been out here today, we, we were, you know, like I said, we're, we're kind of doing it on the, on the cuff here, right? No waypoints, nothing. I mean, we're, we're just going along here and trying to figure it out. We started in an obvious, an obvious spot, right? Somewhere we think they should be. You picked up one right away. We dropped the anchor. We've been out 10 minutes. We got a nice fish. Yeah. Um, so again, it makes sense to find the places where the, you know the fish are going to, something like a spawning shoreline. And then if they're not there, look at the areas directly adjacent to it where there's a lot of food. It's a good way to... A good makes way to a lot of sense. Up. All right, let's keep her moving. Yeah. One down. We are using a hunter's boat today. He's got this warrior that he picked up and uh, he's got, I'm not going to say the name of the brand of the batteries, but uh, they are newer batteries and the trolling motor lasted maybe about a half hour to 20 minutes. The batteries were charged up, but here's a prime example. Really, when you're so dependent on your gear and look at Spock in the gear, you better turn around because the legend has got another one. This one got hey, I'll tell you what, we were just talking about batteries and really having good batteries is a key thing. And uh, if I'm gonna look at batteries, I would definitely say it's, well, oh, that's a giant. <laughs> Tank a Woo You're right about that. Yeah, I need a nut. You ain't kidding about that. I was that. like, this one got a lot bigger, that Larry. That is absolutely a giant <laughs> fish. Wow, that is a fat. I'll tell you what, Jeff, fish. that is a gorgeous looking walleye right there. You know, we were just talking about batteries. And, you know, today, obviously, good thing we got an anchor in this boat, but we came out. Hunter was nice enough to let us use this boat. But, you know what? He's just got mediocre batteries in here. And, you know, no different than anything. It's well worth spending the money. And I always tell everybody if you're it looking is. at buying batteries, either go two ways get yourself either Odyssey's 
or if you really want to spend the money, spend them on the Dakota Lithiums, yeah, right? they're both excellent, man, for yep. sure. You know, today we've been able to overcome. We, we got the wind wrapping around this corner. And she's home. I mean, that's a fish. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good fish. Very nice fish. So make sure, I mean, the spot lock is probably one of the greatest things that has been invented for the fishermen, but there is times, especially when you're fishing tight to the boat, um, that you, even in that deeper water, we were in 10 to 12 that day, that that spot lock was definitely bothering them fish and keeping them fish from biting. So really, you kind of got to watch that. Um, so I always keep a regular anchor in the boat too, so have that option. I would say rolling like some other show does, but we're already rolling. Ooh, I don't know if I can hoist this one. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, <laughs> that's a Northwoods fatty. That is a fatty. What a nice Love fish. Love to see that. Absolutely. So yeah, uh, I just caught that bass. Step back a little bit. Hey Jeff, let's talk a little bit about windy conditions like we're dealing with right here. There's a lot to being able to productively fish in the wind when it's like this. Yeah, you know, there really is. And like you said today, you know, we're working without spot lock. We're working with <laughs> 20 mile an hour winds. We're trying to play the wind seam, play the current. And, you know, it's working out fine. We're catching some fish. And uh, it really uh, it really does go to, to show how much uh, you take that for granted, you know, right. these days when I, with, you have something that happens where you don't have everything working in your favor. Hey, Jeff, let's talk a little bit about it. The wind's picked up big time. And, you know, obviously wind is really a good thing, especially when you're working these points like we are. But let's really, I think a lot of people struggle with fishing in high wind. And let's give some people uh, an idea of how they can overcome some of these issues when you're fishing in windy conditions. Yeah, you know, high wind presents a challenge, you know, especially if you don't have all the latest and greatest equipment. You know, spot lock's huge for that. Having enough anchors, you know, two anchors in your boat. So boat position is still everything in the wind. Um, the one thing the wind does do for you is a lot of times it does increase the activity level for the fish, right? So we've all heard of a walleye chop. You know, this is more like a walleye roar. You know, we're dealing with about 20 mile an hour sustained winds today. Uh, so a little bit windier than you may normally encounter, but wind is not necessarily a bad thing for fishing for sure. A lot of times the, the wind, it's just adapting, exactly. So your windblown shores, especially after a couple of days of windblown, are going to be some of your better producers in pretty much every scenario, uh, especially at times of, uh, times of, oh I missed them, times of the year where things are changing like uh, in a spawn or post spawn or, or uh, uh, feeding in that post spawn window type deal or even in the summer with bug hatches anything where you got stuff that's blowing around large amounts of food and stacking stuff in an area it's always going to be one of the things you want to target if you can find places where the wind wraps around a point creates a little bit of a current seam that's something else which is kind of what we're focusing on here that's another thing you want to focus on uh, but again boat control is is huge and really being able to play that wind if you can at all it's always nice to fish off the back you know, and running straight back and, and then going in line, depending on how you're able to position your boat, casting and pulling that bait straight upwind rather than having the wind bowing in your line. Um, but a good, good sensitive rod, super line, you know, your eight pound, I run eight pound fire line and all my stuff, but any of that super braid stuff will work. Um, really making sure that you put everything in your favor to succeed in those a little bit more adverse conditions is something you don't want to try to do. and it kind of slowed down a little bit with the live bait. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on a shiver minnow. So I'm gonna pitch out into about 30 feet of water and I'm gonna let my bait fall a little bit longer and let it get down into the water column where I want it to be tighter to the bottom. And as I come up, I'm gonna speed it up. And I'll tell you, it's all about, again, putting that bait in the right spot and really giving it the right action. So the water's still fairly cold, but so I'm gonna work it a little bit softer versus really popping it hard. On the crank? On the crank. Oh, oh never only. How oh, darn it, you're keeping me from fishing. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. You know, Larry, wise man once told me the best offense is a good defense. Yeah, I'm not gonna argue that point right there. On. Thank you. Again, show everybody what we're doing, switching things up. Yep, so I'm we, casting the shiver and you went through a crankbait. Yep, we, we worked through the fish, the live bait bite kind of shut down. Uh, and as Larry talked about a little bit earlier, um, our first fish this morning talked about going from a feeding bite to a reaction bite. So That's really, huge. Uh, it's huge. Uh, a lot of these fish that are sitting down there that didn't want them, I mean, this fish 100% had live bait in front of its face. Right. This is only my fourth cast with this bait. I just switched. 
Um, but they kind of they kind of turned down on the on the feeding bite. So going through something like Larry switched to a shiver middle, and I switched up to a crankbait to kind of go and try to target more of that reaction bite where you're ripping the bait through their through their area and getting them to trigger on it. Boy, that is just really and, sucked, yeah, he's got a good. And I think it. I think that happens a lot with people. I think you know what you start off your cast and something you have a lot of confidence in it, and all of a sudden you catch the aggressive fish out of that school. And then all of a sudden you guys give up and basically just go to another spot where you got to remember, you know, is that the, there's still a lot of fish sitting in that in that pod right there. But definitely try different types of baits. And again, now this is more of a reactionary bite, so you're not giving that fish time to think about is that am I hungry or am I not hungry? Do I want to bite that or do I not want to bite that? You know, you're ripping it in front of them and they just see it in the reaction. Again, like we're saying, a reactionary bite. Poof, they just throttle it. Yeah, and, and the real difference on there too, you can even see in just how that fish was hooked, how I had to dig out of pliers to get it out. Our jig bites have been pretty subtle. Right. The feeding bites have been subtle. What was, what the reaction strike bite was vicious. That thing throated that bait. That's that what thing I love. Crushed. Woo! Got this one on the shiver middle. Loving that. Feels like a good fish. Oh yeah, he just absolutely smoked it. You know, again, trying to get that bite down is uh, one of the kind of things that just takes a little bit of practice. And before I was pitching straight back and I wasn't quite getting the right feel for it. And it's really, again, it's being able to control that bait. And that's with any kind of lure. You know, just like you were doing before with that crankbait. Absolutely. Again, just twitching it to right and getting it down there just perfect. Jeez. And uh, again, shiver minnow comes up. Hey, well, like we were talking before, you know, it's a big deal as far as trying to get that reactionary bite down on these pods. Now, we've been sitting on this spot now for probably, I don't know, probably a good 45 minutes, maybe an hour in here, and we've caught a lot of fish so far, and a lot of them did come off a live bait, but that's what we started with. And again, like I said, we caught, we caught the active fish out of there, the feeding fish, the ones that are actually hungry and wanted to bite. But now we're getting the reactionary bites, the fish that are biting on the reactionary baits. And that's also a great way. It kept us from moving, kept us from going out into that wind. And I would say that wind is definitely way over yeah. 20 miles an hour. Yeah, she's ripping today. And, and you know, and to that point, the fish we're getting on those reaction strike bites are quality fish. Yeah, they are. A lot of times those ones, I mean, it's what, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We've yep. been out a couple hours. We didn't start till late this morning, really. I mean, we just kind of got out with the, you know, we'll work the midday and then head to the evening if we need to or whatever. And, and it's been fantastic. But middle of the day at that lower times when those fish don't want to move that well it's not a prime time for reaction strike baits get them off the oh right underneath the bowl right underneath the bowl oh another dandy absolutely wait Jeff show them where that bait is on this fish yeah this is a great example of getting those going from that bite. feeding Let's, bite to the reaction bite yep. this is the last one was very similar to this but this one I mean that really you choked it right <laughs> I mean that's that was about 10 casts after your last one. Yep. And you had one other miss in between there. Um, you know, we went through this pot of fish with live bait, caught caught plenty, caught a couple on cranks, and now, you know, the, shiver and now the shiver middle is really shining. Absolutely, very nicely done. Yep, Excellent. I love it. Look at that. Wow. You know, teaching you guys and gals out there to catch more fish and to have more confidence in what you're doing is only going to do one thing get you outdoors more. Beautiful. Now that one doesn't have it engulfed as much, but still crushed it. Though. Definitely, you can see it. Now look at this. That fish has got that shiver minnow buried right sideways, so he absolutely T-boned it just like it's sitting in his mouth right now. That is the cool part, again, about one thing I love really about this bait. It's got a very unique action to it. Like when you rip it up, it glides like no other glide bait. And I'll tell you something, it is a very, once you get used to using it, as far as being able to know where it's sitting in the water column just by using the count method in your head, it's amazing how accurate you can get 
to be able to catch suspended fish. But today, we're, these fish, the fish we're catching now are absolutely pinned to the bottom. But I don't want it actually hitting the bottom. I want it, as soon as it just, I feel it just tick a little bit, I'm already ripping it back up. Killer. So basically, this is how I'm doing it, you guys. You know, we're sitting right now, we're, what are we in? We're in about six feet of water, just to try to stay out of that wind. That wind is definitely up to almost 30 miles an hour now, believe it or not. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just casting out into that deeper water. I'm letting it fall. So I'm casting out into about, probably about 25, 30. And I'm basically, I don't want it hitting the bottom out there. So I'm letting it go down to a, I'm letting it sink. I'm giving it about a four second count. So it's going down right about, probably about 16 to 18 foot. And then as I come up that ledge right there, now I'm letting it glide. I'm giving it a short little pop, just watch the rod. Yep, that's all you need to do, watch the rod. See, I'm just giving it a small pop. And I'm letting it go glide, I'm feeling it. Okay, it hit right, oh, right there. No and way. Bingo. <laughs> that's a good fish. Good job, lady. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that shiver minnow is just absolutely, I wish I would have started it off with that, but we definitely had a lot of fun catching them on the live bait. But I love the way they hit this, you know. I know, we caught a lot bad. of fish today, my friend, like always. That was a good day, man. Great day. That's a nice fish, too. A little too big to hoist. We'll take that every day of the week. Boy, that wind, I'll tell you, that's kind of the nice part, too, about these lakes is that you can always pretty much find some place to get out of the wind. Yeah, big lakes, small lakes, river systems, you got all sorts of stuff, nice chunky fish. What a great they fish. are beautiful. Man. I never get sick of looking at that I, stuff. Dude, there's something about watching those little white tips when they're coming yeah. up from down deep. Life Nothing is better. good. Absolutely. All right, buddy. One more, we're out of here. Feels like a good one, huh? Man, that wind out there has got to be over 30 now, buddy. Looks like a nice fish. A thumper. Let's see you give him a hee hole. In a hole, he. I'm going to hee I'm watching. Oh, I told you to get the nut. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll. I don't know, man. It's about 2021. That's a little long for a hee hole. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. It's all about having fun. And what a great day we had here with you, Jeff Vandermortel, in northern Wisconsin. I always look forward to this trip. You know that. Hey, let's tell everybody, because they're of course they're gonna wanna come out and experience the same great things that we did today, how they can get a hold of you, man. Uh, my cell is 920-639-6286. The Muskie Academy stuff is Muskie with a Y, academy.com. Name of my business is WDH Guide Service. You can find me on social media, Facebook and Instagram, and my website is Wisconsin, Muskie with a Y, fishingguide.com. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us this week. Like you do each and every week, we really appreciate you guys watching our show every week. Hey, no doubt, like we do and will always do, we wanna give special thanks to all of our military men and women for the great service that they give us and have given us because we wouldn't have the great things we have with if it wasn't for them. Hey, also wanna give special thanks to all of our law enforcement agents and all of our firefighters and paramedics. No doubt, as of today, we are still living in the greatest country in the world, and damn it, let's keep it that way. Hey, don't forget, it is a great day to be alive, and the best part is, we'll see you guys again next week. Thanks for joining us. Hey everybody, welcome to our Leroy Lunchtime. What an amazing day we had today out fishing with our good friend Jeff Vandermortel. Now it's our turn to give him a little bit of a treat and we've got some awesome brats from Leroy's and we have the sweet buck and bite here on the right hand and then we've got the chicken fajita brats. You know, what a great combination and what an awesome way to end the day. Let's get these babies up on the grill and get them going. 
And baby's on there. And next, a chicken fajita. Fajita. Rosalita. My favorite time of day. Food time. Hunter, you definitely have a battery issue. Yeah, well. Yeah, you know, I know. I got it on nine, the boat's moving at one right. mile an hour, dude. Right. I know that, you know. Yeah, one, you know. One mile an hour, too. Oh my god. Oh, you no, I you okay. got it out now. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I would go get five gallons of gas and get a little bit of a torch. And I would go to wherever them serps are, and I would dump it all over them, and then I'd start them on fire. Tommy Hicks, the one and only, has gotten softer than soft. And the only way I can think of, only reason I can think of why you're getting so soft, is that you spent all winter in them $150,000 sherps. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm just thinking. Apparently, Tommy Hicks doesn't want to film a show with us, you know, with Jeff Vandermortel and 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 uh, Greg and myself, you know.